day, my dear ladies. I see you've come back for more information on menopause in general and osteoporosis in particular. We are working our way through a unit on osteoporosis and I am teaching you video by video everything you need to know in order to avoid ending up in a terrible situation due to osteoporosis. This is just the seventh video on osteoporosis and you're probably already coming to realize that there's a whole lot more to it than you ever imagined. You're probably saying, why don't women talk about this more? And the answer is that they don't know the things I've taught you. Unfortunately, this is not common knowledge, but I'm trying to change that. You know, there are so many days, weeks, and months about awareness this and awareness that. But awareness isn't enough. You need actual knowledge, facts, in order to actually do something productive to avoid a disease. That's why I deliver these videos to you in a carefully constructed, precise order. I want all the details to be crystal clear so that you don't end up with a fracture from osteoporosis. Thus far, I've taught you that osteoporosis means bone loss, and it begins when you lose estrogen at the time of postmenopause. In the first five years of postmenopause, you lose 2% of your bone each year. And then you continue to lose 1% of your bone every year after that. But there are no early signs or symptoms to warn you that you're losing bone. So the very first evidence comes in the form of a spine, hip, or wrist fracture from minimal trauma. So today we're ready to address what happens once you've had a fracture. In other words, how do things play out after that? In medical terminology, we use the word prognosis to address what's ahead. If you have my book, whether it's the first edition or the second edition, this material is in chapter 29 in the section entitled Epidemiology and Prognosis. And if you think a fracture is a fracture, <laughs> you need to stop what you're doing and watch this video closely. Because when it comes to an osteoporotic fracture at postmenopause, nothing could be farther from the truth. Most of us have witnessed people with fractures of one bone or another. You've probably seen people wear a cast for a while and then rehabilitate for a while and eventually recover completely. Maybe you've had such a fracture. Well, the prognosis for a fracture that occurs as a result of osteoporosis is not as straightforward, and I'm going to explain how it differs. First of all, let's address the prognosis of a fracture that occurs in normal bone. When you fracture a bone that is not deficient in quantity, the fracture does not affect much of the bone. And because there's so much bone present, it can heal the site of the fracture readily and completely. If you've got all this bone, you're in much better shape. Remember when I used this conveyor belt to explain that your bones are always turning over, replacing old bone with new bone? So this end would be new bone, this end would be old bone? Well. When your bone is normal, that process speeds up a bit and you replace the fractured bone with brand new bone in short order. Or order. So the new bone formation outpaces bone loss. So you get new bone in this quantity and it goes through the process of bone turnover. But the healing process involves adding more bone to the conveyor belt on the front end and you lose less bone on the back end. 
Did you see I added two bones here and I removed only one there? You have enough bone to compensate for the loss. So when you fracture a normal bone, the prognosis is that you will regain full function. You certainly don't think of a fracture in normal bone as a life-altering or life-threatening event. None of this is true when you fracture a bone that is osteoporotic. First of all, you are older when you fracture an osteoporotic bone. And because there is much less bone to begin with, the fracture encompasses a much larger percentage of the bone. And if you have an inadequate quantity of bone already, how are you going to speed up the process of bone formation to heal damaged bone? So if instead of starting out with this, you only start out with this, with an osteoporotic fracture, you have so little bone that there is barely enough there to sustain itself. You certainly don't have the ability to speed up the process of bone formation. And if you've already sustained a fracture, you are in the process of continually losing more bone. So healing does not ensue as it should. All right, so what happens? Well, I'll tell you in terms of statistics. This will give you the big picture. I told you in video 198 that 50% of postmenopausal women will sustain some type of fragility fracture over the rest of their lives. 25% of those will be hip fractures. And hip fractures tend to be the most severe and devastating of all the fractures. Of the 25% of women who suffer a hip fracture, over 20% will die of the complications associated with that fracture. Of those who survive, 50% will require assisted living or home health care. These women may never regain the ability to walk or to live alone again. Fractures of the spine are equally devastating. They can result in chronic back pain, humpback curvature of your upper back, and loss of height. Some women have neck deformities that cause permanent disfigurement and restrict movement in a number of ways. Needless to say, even without neck deformities, the pain from a spine fracture can greatly restrict normal movement, including very simple activities like bending and reaching. And wrist fractures can result in pain, disfigurement, and disability, also leading to an inability to live independently. And these are just the physical consequences. There are also the issues of depression, psychological symptoms, anxiety, and fear that follow a fracture. Fear is fierce after a fracture. It's not uncommon for a woman to avoid previous activities merely due to the fear of falling. The loss of independence and mobility place a huge strain on the woman, her family, and her caregivers. And the economic burden exceeds billions of dollars annually. The bottom line is that women who have a spine or hip fracture have a six to nine fold increase in mortality. This means that your risk of dying from osteoporosis is at least equal to or greater than your risk of dying from breast cancer. And here's the other huge thing to know about the prognosis of an osteoporotic fracture. Fractures beget fractures. That means that once you have one fracture, you are at very high risk of having another one. A prior fracture increases your risk of another fracture by 86%. 
In fact, 10% of women who have one fragility fracture from osteoporosis will have another one within just one year. A spine fracture increases your risk for another spine fracture by five times. And a hip fracture doubles your risk for another hip fracture. Now, I know this video is depressing. And I know some of my viewers are going to write, please tell us something good. Well, I am telling you something good. I'm telling you what you need to know in order to avoid being one of these statistics. Would you rather remain ignorant until you fracture your spine, hip, or wrist and end up in a really bad situation? You should welcome factual information like this that can save your life. Ignorance is not bliss. It's worthless. The Humpty Dumpty rhyme was right. Humpty Dumpty couldn't be put back together again. And you won't either. So learn what I have to teach you and you won't have to worry about it. If you only learn the pleasant things, you will make up for it later. You know that I'll be giving you all sorts of options for preventing osteoporosis and falls in the upcoming videos. Count on me to do that. The whole point is for you to understand the basis of everything before I give you that information. So the summary for today is this. A fracture of osteoporotic bone does not heal well. Instead, it causes permanent deformity, inability to live independently, or death. And if you have one, you have an 86% chance of having a second. So now that I've put you in a bad mood, <laughs> I'll stop for today. <laughs> Next week, I'll teach you all the risk factors for osteoporosis. Remember when we did that for heart attack? I'll go through the entire list and we'll fill in your worksheet for that item too. That will be the beginning of your empowerment against osteoporosis. And remember, you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation at menopausetaylor.me anytime. I'm always here to help you. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to get your friends to subscribe to my channel. And follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'll see you later. Bye.